Hi everyone, this is author Kevin Folliard, and today I'm going to be reading Chapter 1 from my dark fantasy novel, Jake Carter and the Nightmare Gallery. Robbie fought through the rainforest, branches poked and whipped as he sprinted full speed, his heart pulsing, but soon the air thickened, his muscles strained. The faster he wanted to run, the deeper his world sank into slow motion. A cold presence crept over his shoulders, around his neck, and down his spine. He realized that all this time he had been sleeping. Dreaming, in fact. Yet this dream was real, and it would be difficult to escape. Perhaps impossible. The normal passage of time resumed. A rush of air slammed Robbie backwards onto a stone altar in the middle of the jungle. The night sky beyond the canopy tinted red. The air grew dank and foul like swamp water. Snarls echoed from the surrounding trees. Gray mist wafted over the treetops, and a boy about his age, eleven or twelve, dropped through. Robbie recognized him, but for some reason couldn't place his name. The harder he tried to remember, the more difficult it became to think. The boy carved a path through the gray vapors and landed before the altar. His wintry blue eyes and matted blonde hair triggered instant fear. The name lingered on the tip of Robbie's tongue, something short like Jack or Ike. "'Silly of you to think you could run,' the boy said. He tightened his fists, and invisible ropes snaked around Robbie's wrists and ankles, binding him in place. "'Why can't I remember your name?' Robbie struggled. "'Because,' came a deep, menacing voice from beyond the trees, "'someone didn't follow through on his assignment.' "'I'm working on it,' the blonde boy muttered. A shadowy figure floated from the misty treetops, passing through gnarled branches like a ghost. It took the shape of an adult man in a hat and long coat. Robbie couldn't make out his face, but he knew this person as well. He had every reason to be terrified. He just didn't know why. "'Let's go over it once more,' the shadowy man pushed the boy aside and approached Robbie. Robbie squirmed on the altar as the man stooped to examine him. He clutched Robbie's head in both hands, turned it side to side, then let it fall back against the stone with a painful thump. Even up close, a layer of darkness enveloped the man's face. "'You started too passively,' the man said to the blonde boy. "'You're playing with your food. Get both hands in there and rip the skull open. Poking and prodding leaves shards of memory that may cost us dearly,' he paced. Curious minds gnaw at curious facts, and suddenly we have a growing urban legend. The man shook the boy by the shoulders. This is the kind of mission where I need you to be swift and calculating. One action. Get the job done. I'm sorry, Dr. Shh. The man hushed the boy. Robbie's never going to hear our names again. He was good, but we can do better. Let's move on. Are you really going to recruit him? The boy implored. After Robbie's gone, I mean. I think he's ready. I'll help one thing at a time. The man held his finger to the boy's lips. Now, do you want to finish this, or shall I? I can do it, the boy said. He turned to Robbie. His eyes burned electric green. Robbie had seen those glowing eyes before. These two people, the man and the boy, had used him, tricked him, and now they were going to do it again to someone else. The blonde boy held his hand over Robbie and concentrated. Robbie's memory struggled to resurface. He understood what the boy was doing. Robbie had been learning it for weeks. He could control this. This was his dream. He imagined the boy knocked off his feet, and it happened instantly. The boy cried out as he flew towards the shadowy man. The man sidestepped and caught the boy in midair. Sloppy, the man said. Even worse than I'd feared. You made him forget the superficial facts, the names, places, sights, and sounds. He dropped the boy. But you left the most crucial part. Everything he learned from us. I'll kill him, the boy shouted. Robbie felt the invisible ropes tighten, pulling him flat on the rock altar. The snarls of the surrounding forest grew louder, nastier. The jungle rustled, thousands of leaves shaking at once. Suddenly the air was teeming with bats. They tore from the trees, screaming like angry devils. White disfigured faces and blood-red eyes converged on Robbie in an instant, biting and clawing, scraping off bits of skin, slapping him with leathery wings. He cried to God to make it stop, but it seemed to go on forever. Finally, the bats vanished. The shadowy man shouted. Robbie turned his head and watched as the man repeatedly whacked the boy with his hat. I ask you to be swift and tactical like a surgeon, and still you play games. You're always playing with people, never thinking about your goal. 
He made me mad. Control your anger. Don't let it control you. Who do you think you're impressing showing off like that? Him? Me? Do you think I'm impressed by angry fits? The boy cowered as the man raised his pitch black fist. He lowered it. I'll finish this, because apparently you're too stupid to do something of which you're fully capable. The boy swallowed his tears and regained his composure. The shadow man advanced. You were an exemplary student, Robbie, he said. Part of me delighted in your final display of dedication and achievement, your resistance to pitiful theatrics. I truly hate to take this from you. Robbie ignored the man. He knew that if he concentrated, he could control his dream. He focused on the branches above and changed them. Dark green vines shot from their tips and wrapped around the man and boy. The shadow man spread his arms in a burst of green fire, and the vines charred into ash. You are one of the more tenacious ones. He secured the back of Robbie's head with one hand and took his chin in the other. You have the imagination and intelligence to be one of the best. A shame your upbringing got the better of you. Robbie couldn't struggle any more. The shadowy man was calming him, and he didn't know how to fight it. He desperately wanted to wake up, but somehow that wasn't an option. There are certain things in this world that must be done for the betterment of our existence as thinking, feeling beings, Robbie. I'm sorry we didn't see eye to eye. Consider yourself expelled. A series of sharp, hot injections stabbed Robbie's skull. A burning sensation spread through his brain. Everything went black. Robbie awoke on the floor of his bedroom to the sound of a fan blowing. His head stung. He must have fallen off the top bunk. His little brother slept soundly on the bottom. The digital clock on the dresser read 4.17 a.m. He stuck his head out the window behind the box fan and took a breath of muggy air. Birds sang nearby. He couldn't shake the odd feeling he'd forgotten something. Yet everything seemed accounted for. The only thing he couldn't recall was a name. A short name. A boy's name, balancing on the tip of his tongue. It ended with a K sound. Mike. Duke. Jack. Jake Carter and the Nightmare Gallery is now available in paperback and Kindle through Amazon.com.